So, nasa acute ako and one is to one a patient ratio. So, para akong nasa ICU. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna love it. You have to be a dialysis nurse too. Really? <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Nurse Photographer here. Welcome back to the show. Our guest in this episode is Nurse Fino, who is a dialysis nurse based in Roseville, California. We're going to talk about his life in America, his work, the nurse-patient ratio, and other nursing-related stuff. And did you guys know that Vino came from New Zealand? Intriguing, right? I'm excited to ask the reason why. So everyone, let's welcome Nurse Vino. Vino, welcome to the show. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Fino. Um, what's going on, Daniel? Actually, it's it's very. I'm very pleased that we're able to do this because we're actually waiting for um the perfect time that we can you know we can do this because I know my schedule is so um tight and your schedule is so tight as well. But I'm so pleased right now. Um, yeah. So what do you want to know? <laughs> we're finally na nagtigma ng schedule natin. Um, okay, Vina, um, I watched your vlog and I want to know the reason why um, from New Zealand to the USA. Actually, you know, um, even, even back in New Zealand, my friends were like telling me, why are you going to America? You're already here and all that. But because uh, iba kasi tayo ng reason there. Eh. Bakit? Alam mo yon kung bakit? Yung pagpunta ko kasi sa New Zealand, it's by luck. And ikukwento ko sa inyo. Um, next uh, later on, but yun dito sa US naman. Ang reason ko especially is, um, of course, uh, I'm in America. Um, known siya to uh, parang number one for for wages and salary for nurses. So kung iko compare ko siya sa New Zealand, mas malaki yung sinasaud ko dito sa America, which is I think especially here in California, I'm earning triple. So um. That's the main reason. At the same time, as well, I wanna I wanna you know take my family here in America because in America there's like a petition for family. So uh, they're actually my deepest why why I'm moving here and why I'm I really wanted to go to America because in New Zealand, um, I I'm a permanent resident in New Zealand. I can go back anytime, but I cannot take my family with me. So so that's the main reason actually. But Vino, how did you um, go to New Zealand? How did I go to New Zealand? That's very interesting because um, I, I mentioned earlier that it's by lack. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with working holiday visa or have you ever heard about yeah, it? Have you I've ever heard that yeah, you heard, before? Yeah. You heard yeah. it? Yeah, so working holiday visa is, um, is a kind of visa that is only for young individuals and they are like... Um, given a chance to go to New Zealand to uh, for a year. It's just for a year to travel by the name itself, uh, working holiday, because you're going to be working and traveling at the same time and to exchange culture. So what happened to me is I saw that on the internet and then it happened to uh, it happened that I have a friend here in New Zealand as well. So I asked him about um, working holiday visa and all that. And... I, I just, you know, I just logged in, um, uh, fill out the form, because parang una-unahan yan siya eh. So, ang swerte ko, kasi only 100 people are allowed to go to New Zealand uh, in the Philippines to do that. So, I was picked. I was one, one of them. So, parang na, nakarating ako dun by luck talaga na um, 100 tao nga lang yung pwede. And I thought it's a fraud. So, um, nag-sign up ako online. Una unahan siya. It doesn't matter if you're if you're um whatever course you are, if you're a nurse, engineer, whatever, as long as you're a young professional, not more than 30. So wala lang sa mukha, pero that by that time I'm not I'm not 30 yet. So so uh, I fill out the form and then yun sa parang submitted. And then and then, but if it, it happened like five in the morning, because ano eh, parang uso yung mga computer games that time, and we have um internet uh internet cafe back in the Philippines. So alam mo yun na like, bantay bantay sa internet shop. So fill out ako ng form, and then of course I have a friend as well. Yung sabi ko siya na nag-assistant sa akin, classmate ko ng college. Um, so what to fill out and all that, and then pagdating ng nine o'clock. 
I received an email from MBIE. I won't forget that. MBIE, I thought, na-scam yung credit card ko or ano na tawag mo, parang na-fish. Kasi MBIE, so parang sa ano to? Tapos 7,000 pesos. To cut the story short, uh, after that email, may tumawag sa akin kung na immigration. I will never forget his name. His name is, uh, his last name, Porfit. His last name is something for fit. And then English speaking siya. So, siya, hindi ako, ano, parang wala nga akong plano mag... Meron naman ako plano mag-abroad, pero hindi ko akalain na talagang sa swerte na ako nag-ganon-ganon lang. Sabi niya na, hey, congratulations, si Visa got approved, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sabi niya, this is from New Zealand Immigration. Sabi ko, oh, tapos yung MBIE means Ministry of Business industry, parang gano'n. So, parang yun yung immig- and immigration, parang gano'n siya. Then, nung nag-move ako ng New Zealand, I I heard lang sa mga tao dun sa New Zealand, they have to study, they spend like million million pesos, they have to um do the bridging course. um It's called CAP. So, I did that as well, but um it's not my parang way to move. Hindi yun yung way ko kasi nga working holiday visa. But then, they were trying to do the working holiday visa for a long time. They can never get it. So I was like, oh my God, this is for me. So, parang sabi ko nga, uh, sabi ko talagang by luck talaga kasi 100 na tao lang. So pagdating ko ng New Zealand, uh, syempre adjust, adjustment, lahat ng adjustment. And uh, I'm not even a nurse back uh, in New Zealand kasi I have to do the bridging course. Um, it's called Competency Assessment Program. So if you guys wanted to move to New Zealand as well, um, message me or um, get contact with me because meron din akong um, parang mga tao na kilala doon. And also, I moderate a group, you know, in nurses in New Zealand. Um, and we help people to, uh, you know, to know about New Zealand as well. So, um, yeah, so pagdating ko ng New Zealand, syempre, culture shock, um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. tahimik, alam mo yun. Sabi, sa, pero alam mo, sabi nila na, oh, uh, maraming baka ka makikita and all that. Pero hindi naman, kasi I was in Auckland. Hindi naman talaga. Pero if you go uh, sa ibang ano sa ibang lugar or like hour away from Auckland where I live, dun may mga baka or ano. And talagang parang ano talaga, parang postcard yung mga, yung ganda. Uh, yung ganda ng New Zealand. Wow. So, you know story, how did I go to New Zealand? But as uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was a nurse back then. So I, I started working as a caregiver. And the rule dun sa, dun, the rule dun sa, ano, dun sa visa na yun, working holiday visa, you're not allowed to work in one employer for more than three months. So that was kind of risky. I'm just so lucky that um, I got to work. So I was working as a caregiver after three months. I don't know what to do now because I'm like, I need to, because it's working holiday visa, so you have to travel, right? So you have to travel, work, travel, after three months, travel a lot. So I was like thinking maybe I should apply to grocery or let me strawberry picking, you know, because I don't know what to do now. Pero yun nga, isang, isang requirement to the visa na yun is meron kang parang money na isi-show. May show money siya eh. Kasi na you can live kahit hindi ka mag-work for a year. Parang ganun. May requirement siya. Ganun. Siyempre, nangutang ako sa tatay ko. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, ayun. I remember na nag-struggle din ako. Then, sabi ng manager ko, um, no, don't, don't go anymore. We'll just convert your visa to a real work visa. Then that's how I stayed in New Zealand. So kinonvert nila sa work holiday, uh, sa work visa talaga. Pero nakatinali, they ban me, uh, parang tinali nila ako sa kanila for two years. Ah, na parang, parang oo, oh, oh, so, oo, oh, oh, parang ganun. So hindi ako makaano. Then nagpaalam ako sa kanila na mag-aaral ako ng nursing. So yun talaga yung competency assessment program. Then after ko mag-aaral, bumalik ako sa kanila as a nurse na niwan umalis din ako. Siyempre, they will, ano, kasi, pero hindi ako nag-stay sa kanila ng two years kasi naintindihan nila na na I need to grow and, uh, alam mo yon I'm young for growth and advancement. Kasi it's a nursing facility. Are you familiar with that one? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I started work. Yeah, so I started working in nursing facility. Then hanggang sa naging registered nurse ako, um, nag-apply na ako sa hospital. Eventually, they let me go naman eh, kasi that's for my growth, and I'm very thank- thankful for you know for my man to my manager na ano na sinuport niya ako. And then, pag it's in New Zealand, pag nurse ka, matik yun. If you're a registered nurse, you can apply for residency. So, after my bridging course, not not even a year, ah, hindi wala pa kung one year, naging nurse na ako. Dumating ako ng caregiver, naging nurse ako. Because you have to pass your IELTS. The IELTS is like, all seven. Ang hirap. <laughs> Ang hirap, promise. General. Or yung OET. No, all, but all score. All seven. G- general or academic IELTS? Academic. Academic. Oh. Tapos, uh, yung isa is OET. Uh-huh. So, so yung IELTS, I heard from my friend na ang hi- mahirap yan, ganyan. Hindi ko na-trinay, actually. Hindi ko na siya trinay. Nag-OET na ako kasi <laughs> sabi nila yun yung mas madali. So, yeah, mas madali siya. Madali yung OET kasi related sa nursing. Then, yun. Then, yun. Then, pag nurse ka sa New Zealand, you also have a chance to be a nurse in Australia. So, I'm a, uh, I'm a nurse in Australia too before moving here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yun. Nurse put nurse. <laughs> san, ba, san ba next na ano? <laughs> na Galing. license. Parang one in a million yung story mo. No? Ngayon lang ako nakakilala na taong ganun ang pathway niya. No, pa yun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pag may nakakausap ako sa Pilipinas, usually ang una nila tatanong. Uh, meron meron ako one time. Uh, hindi ko na, hindi ko naman yung mention yung name no, pero I have a friend na sabi, nasa New Zealand na siya. Then sabi sa kanya, "Hey, hey uh, ano po ako na New Zealand?" Ganyan, ganyan. Ang reply niya sa akin one word lang. Paano? <laughs> Kasi nag <laughs> nag-aral siya doon. She spent million. Uh-huh. Ang tinanong niya sa akin paano? So parang I was like offended na why hindi 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 ko ba di ba ako pwedeng mag-aral lang katulad ng ginawa mo or what? Then sabi ko sa kanya, I work in holiday visa. I spend 7,000 pesos. Tapos <laughs> bye <laughs> kasi 7,000 pesos lang yung visa na yun back then. <laughs> Tapos siya nag-aral. So iba-iba yung pathway natin. Iba-iba yung way natin to go. Alam mo yun? Kaya yun lang, pag merong, kaya ako para naging ano ko sa buhay is, pag may nagtatanong sa akin, sinasagot ko. Or kahit makulit, kahit paulit-ulit. Kasi kaya siya nagtatanong, hindi niya alam. So, mm-hmm. yung pagsabi ko na parang gano, tapos ang sagot sa akin is, paano, paano ka ma... Parang uh, uh, na-offend, na-offend ako na parang wala ba akong way na ano yeah. parang gano'n kasi nag-aral ka mag-aral ka though siguro yung intention na is wala namang masamang oh. intention kaya lang kaya lang I, I know naman din I know naman din siya so yun so I just prove and uh, prove to her and better myself nung gumating ako sa New Zealand yun ang daming hugot yun <laughs> teka yung pumunta ka na sa States, um, so nag-NPLEX ka, inayos mo lahat yeah. na sa New Zealand ka rin. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah, mas madali. I was really lucky. So talagang sabi ko nga parang ang gaan-gaan. Kaya uh, yung ano ko is to pay it forward. Di ba sa vlog ko, I discuss about yeah. NPLEX, I discuss kung paano mag-move sa US and all that. Kasi, kasi nga, ang gaan eh, ang dali nung way ko. Alam mo nung nag-apply ako ng US, ng US, nag-COVID. So sa immigration, are you a nurse? Ganun, sabi ko. Yeah? Okay, that was a good. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> okay, ito. So parang nag-move ako ng may COVID. So parang na, kinabahan din ako. Kasi parang ano meron? Bakit COVID ako nag-move? Parang gano'n. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Kaya Pero panya. sobrang bilis uh-huh. nung, nung time ko. Sa Pilipinas lang, kasi bumabagal, kasi nakasara yung immigration. Mm-hmm. Pero sa New Zealand, never nagsara yung... Although there's a, there's a point na nagsara yung immigration, pero ano pa rin eh, kasi mababa lang COVID case. Uh-huh. 
Tapos pag pumu- consider kasi New Zealand a green country. So if magmo-move sa ibang country or ano, alam nilang malinis, alam mo 'yun, parang <laughs> hindi ba parang hindi na masyado marami question. 'Yun yung totoo kasi I have a friend na nag-apply from Philippines na decline. Pero pag galing sa green country, hindi na pinapaswa, hindi mga ganoon ba? Sorry. Kasi konti yung yeah yeah, kaya di ba kaya sa Pinas parang there were times na hindi pag galing ka sa green country, parang hindi ka iya ano or something. Parang lesser being quarantine. I can't remember, pero parang may list of countries. You know. Teka, yung nag-exam ka, yung yung nag-exam ka for the NCLEX, meron ba nun sa New Zealand or nag-fly ka pa sa Australia? No, I, I I flew to Australia sa Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, mag, 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 ano, mag, mag, maganda mag-exam sa place na yung you feel comfortable. Yeah, so I, I felt comfortable doon. Kasi, alam mo pang mag-exam ka. Though yung NCLEX kasi hindi mo alam kung saan merong available. Kasi meron ako friend. Um, she have to like fly sa India or yung isa sa Singapore. So, ganun. Ganun siya. Nataon lang na konti lang siguro titik sa Australia. So, merong available sa atin. Hmm. And mabilis naman ako makatravel kasi three hours away lang ko sa New Zealand. So, kung lapit lang. Oh, no. Wow. Hmm. And then, yung naghanap ka ng employer, parang same din ba yung process di pag nasa Pilipinas ka compared na nasa Australia ka papuntang um, America? Yeah. Same din. Uh, Ang ano lang, mas mabilis. Wala masyadong ano, kung ano nung tanong ba. Mm-hmm. So, dumaan ka rin sa um, in-approve yung I-140 mo, ganun. Priority. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. yeah, so pinagtanan ko rin yun. Kasi hindi naman ako, hindi ako parang nag-take lang uh, this year, then naka-fly na. Matagal. Siguro, Uh, 2018, nagkaano na ako ng NPLEX. So, oh. di ba? Oo. So, oh, oh. so, so two years. So, ito year din pala, no? Ah, yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Two years okay. din. Mas mabilis lang talaga na yung mga interview, um, wala na masyadong tarong. Mm-hmm. Especially sa New Zealand immigration. They're really nice. So, American sila eh. They're American. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yung I think yung mga nasa immigration they're American. Yeah. Na na-assign doon sa immigration mm-hmm. ng New Zealand. Oh my God. Ikaw ba? Are you mm-hmm. like planning to take NCLEX or you mm-hmm. did or waiting for planning my, to ano move somewhere? I'm waiting for my I-140 to get approved. Nabilis lang yan. Nabilis lang yan. If you need, ano, if you need employer or whatever, let me know. Baka makatulong ako. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yung pagdating Walang sa... Ano yan, walang, ano bayad uh, walang bayad yun. Walang bayad yun. Ano. Yeah. What's your question? Sorry. Um, yung pagdating sa Amerika, ang first nursing job mo is sa dialysis na. Yeah, agency. Mm. Agency. Mm-hmm. Agency. At the, at the first at the first time na dumating ako dito. Diyan na agad yun sa Roseville, California. Oh no, no. Uh, that's iba-iba eh. Iba-iba kung saan nila ako contract Yeah. Ah, talaga? So you were assigned to different areas pala? Wow. Well, uh, yeah, agency siya. Mm, okay. okay. Yeah. Akala ko parang dyan ka na sa Roseville ever since. Oh, oh no, no. That's it. I know eh. You have to apply for um, licensure here in California. So, if you want to know yung endorsement process uh, sa mga nakapanood ito, watch yeah. my vlog. <laughs> so, it's Venus Corners and then endorsement process to California. So, yeah. Um, I think I waited for some time then para maging license here. And unang-unang requirement to be licensed here in California is social security number. Mm-hmm. So, if you're not in the U.S., you can't. 
Pero kung nasa Pinas ka pa, but you're about to go to USA, it's better na you're, ano, ano mo yun, you're collecting all the data uh, requirements and all that to endorse your license. Mm -hmm. Can you share us a typical demo at work from start of the shift to the end? And ilan yung nurse patient ratio nyo, Vino? Yeah. Um, as a nurse, actually, um, eto ah, this is my honest opinion. Um, there's no actually typical day for uh for a nurse, kasi it varies. Alam mo yon. It it can change in any moment momentum. You know, um, pwedeng this year you see this patient on its on their um weakest point, mm -hmm. or pwedeng the other day you see them in their you know strongest um. Uh, strongest point, but um, there's actually no typical day kasi pa iba iba talaga eh. Pero I'll, I'll say na yung typical day ko, uh, you know, I work in the dialysis unit. Um, uh, kasi I just started in my new work, but before I started uh, to my new work, um, I was a charge nurse in a dialysis unit. So, iba tinatriage ko muna yung mga pasyente and then kanino ko ibibigay to tong mm -hmm. pasyente na to and sino yung nurse ko, ganun tina and who is yung parang um mataas yung potassium, who are the ano most priority, ganun ganun kasi yung charge. Um tapos ang patient ratio kasi i work in i work in ano acutes so dito iba yung style ng dialysis dito sa New Zealand iba rin so sa New Zealand we have inpatient dialysis unit so ayun is nasa hospital siya but we're catering outpatient too so parang inpatient siya pero may mga pumupunta rin na pasyente may kidney problem nagpapa-dialysis sa hospital parang sa Pinas mm -hmm. Pero uh, meron ding inpatient. So yung inpatient is yung mga admitted. Dito naman, they have uh, yung term nila acute and chronic. So acute dialysis patient, of course, yung mga nagkaroon ng trauma, uh, kailangan dialysis. COVID patient, nagkaroon ng dialysis, uh, nagkaroon ng sorry, kidney problem. Um, or patient na nag-overdose ng drugs and then uh, nagkaroon ng kidney failure. And so, so to cut this, to make it short, ang dinadialysis namin dito is yung mga critical patient. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, nasa acute ako and one is to one ang patient ratio. So, para akong nasa ICU. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna love it. You have to be a dialysis nurse too. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're gonna like it. Kasi one is the one. Hook, hook the patient in the machine. Monitor every 15 minutes. Monitor. That's it. And then terminate the, the dialysis. Wow. And then it will run. <laughs> and it will run for three hours. But for the whole day, the for 12 hours, the maximum patient, the na parang naka schedule sa is only two. Two per day. Yeah, you can. You can. They can ask you to um, you know, to get, to get another one, if you want. So, ngayon, I'm not working. Sa ano? I'm not working. I, I used to work sa private company before, and and the, before uh, working sa new workplace. Ko. So ngayon, I'm working sa research hospital. So it's a university hospital. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So yun, one is to one. But pag chronic pala ito, so pag chronic, iba rin yung, ano, iba rin yung, yung ratio. I heard it's one is to 12. Pero chronic yun, and you don't handle yung patient. Mostly, kasi parang more on assessment ka, kasi you have a ano, technician mm -hmm. to insert the needles, do the cannulation, um, set up the machine and all that and return the blood 
ang role mo lang doon is assessment. Kaya mas marami. So, iba-iba siya. Kaya assessment ka, so check mo yung lungs, kung meron bang fluids, ganyan. Parang kang doctor actually sa mga uh-huh. clinic. Ganun. But I don't have experience sa clinic kasi ever since parang acute na. Sa acute na talaga ako. So, pang-pang acute. Pang acute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, joke joke lang. Yeah, so sa acute na ako, so one is to one yun. Okay. okay. Kasi alam mo, ang dami ko nababasa at ang dami kong nakikita no, ng mga nurses, nagre-reklamo sila, na nagugulat sila pagdating nila sa Amerika, dialysis sila. Magugulat sila like, ang dami doon nilang patient, minsan umabot pa doon ng 20. Pero oh, siguro sa mga... Yeah, to, sa chronic yun. Hmm. They're working in chronic. Ang problem sa dialysis. So I'll say, I'll, I'll tell you, para din, di ba, wala, hindi, para hindi bias or ano, fair. Um, ang problem sa dialysis na na-notice ko dito is yung opportunity. Hindi, hindi kung hindi ka sanay sa acute or sa hospital setting, you'll end up sa chronic. You have to, and then you want a change. Then you can be a manager or you can, you can work in acute. So, ganun, ganun, ganun lang yung ano niya. Unlike pag na may ward experience ka, you can be flexible. They can put you to onco, they can put you to um, uh, pack you. Post anesthesia, baka. <laughs> Kaya, kasi dito, ganun. <laughs> baka maban ako. So, yun ang ganun dito eh. So, nung una nung una, sabi ko, what? <laughs> Wala ko naman, pack you too. <laughs> Post anesthesia care unit. So, yeah. So you can, unlike kung dialysis ka sa chronic, chronic, ikat mo na lang yan. <laughs> yeah. And what's your shift like? Para eight, eight hour shifts, 12 hour shifts? 12 hours. 12 I like 12 hours. hours um, kasi I like traveling. I, I travel a lot. Mm-hmm. So, so pag 12 hours, usually inaano ko yan, three days. So sa first week ko, diba two, two weeks yan? First week ko, three days. For example, ilalagay ko yan ng Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then yung second week ko, ilalagay ko ng, oh, ma- then Saturdays, Saturday off ako, then Sunday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I have a, a leeway and then I can travel. I can go to New York, I can go wherever. Yeah. Huwag ka mainggit. Sa New York, sa nabot ko New York, parang gusto mo New York eh. <laughs> You'll, you'll, makakarating ka sa New York. Uh-huh. How about some funny moments at work, Vino? I have a lot. I have a lot. Um, okay. Uh, uh-huh. Sige. Ito, is, alam mo yung accent sa, pwede yung sa New Zealand. Uh-huh. Hindi naman uh-huh. kailangan na nasa US. Yo, kasi yeah. bago, konti lang din naman yung funny experience ko dito. Yung bago ko sa New Zealand, ito talaga nakakatawa. Yung accent, I'm not ano ha, yung, I mean, wala akong, yung, at ako yung may problema, hindi sila, kasi yung pagkakaintindi ko ng accent nila is mali. So sabi niya sa akin, um, hey, hey, I want some ice cream and jelly. So, um, ang accent nila, medyo strong. For example, uh, they say, uh, yung yes, di ba, American as yes, they're gonna say yes. Pero ma- ma- medyo matigas, mm-hmm. pero it's really nice, maganda, parang gano'n. So sabi niya, jelly. So sa atin, America, kasi Americanize yung English natin, gel, gel o, or jelly ace, di ba, yun yung alam natin. So sabi niya, ice cream and jelly. So hindi ko alam po na yung jelly. Gel o pala yun, yung jelly ace. So, ano ba yun sa atin sa Pinas? Gelat- gelatin? Ano ba yun? Yung parang, Jelly Basta sa gelatin yung, lang eh. Sure. Jelly, parang ganun, di ba? So sa akin, jelly, ang pagkakaintindi ko, chili. Pumunta ako sa kitchen, namin ako ng ice cream and chili. <laughs> <laughs> Oo, nakakahiya. Nakakahiya talaga. <laughs> so, pagdating ko, pagdating ko sa pasyon ng college siya, sabi niya sa akin, parang ako na doon with ice cream and chili. So, Sinerge ko na lang yung, ano, yung chili ice cream sa Mayon Volcano. Yun sa, ano, sa Bicol. So, oh, sorry, because in the Philippines, we have chili ice cream. And then, yun, pinakita ko sa akin, oh, that looks interesting. <laughs> yeah, yun ba? Yeah. 
And uh, funny moments. Uh, okay, so so ato ha sa kasi ano um since America is really diverse, iba iba yung iba iba yung culture, iba iba yung yung English natin, merong American English, merong British English, New Zealand English, kanya. Then merong kaming hindi ko na i-mention yung ano, pero meron kaming doctor na sobrang ano niya sa spelling kasi yung yung ano nila hindi talaga sila nag-spell ng English ng English talaga. Mm-hmm. Tapos ang um, sabi niya, please ano ambulate the patient pero ang nalagay niya please amputate the patient ayun nakakatawa siya para sa doc ni which which leg so oh no no <laughs> siguro busy din ba diba? so bino para sa iyo yung pagdating mo sa America parang what were the challenges yung mga pinakanahirapan ka from New Zealand ka from New Zealand actually pa eto ah, honest Honest talaga na ano na opinion is pag move ko dito from New Zealand medyo madadalian ako kasi galing na ako sa Pinas nagmove ako ng New Zealand pero siguro kung nagmove ako ng Pinas papuntang America mahirap pero ang mm-hmm. challenge ang challenge sa akin is I think your culture sa New Zealand um you alam mo yun, we're we're like relaxed more laid back talaga uh, dito Yeah, dito yung eto nakakahiya mang sabihin pero bawal tatanggap ng sa Amerika. Uh-huh. That's that's true. You have to be tough. You have to be strong. So siguro ganun. And sabi nga nila, this is the ano, America is the land of the free and home of the brave. So um dapat you have to be brave. You have to be brave enough to sur- survive and thrive in America. It's just so happen I I know how to I uh, know I know how to thrive because I I used to be uh in New Zealand from from Philippines I'm really independent mm-hmm. but I think yung mga bago na mag-move dito and hindi sila marunong makisama sa iba ibang culture kasi especially in America America is very diverse especially where I am right now it's California it's very diverse mm-hmm. so iba-ibang iba-ibang culture, iba-ibang klase ng tao. Kailangan marunong ka makisama. So, yun yung challenge. And, um, you have to speak English. Uh-huh. Kahit mali-mali yan, you have to speak English. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kasi tayo yung foreigner dito, eh. Uh-huh. We're the foreigners here. So, um, pa- parang pakikisama na, ling- na lang din natin yan sa kanila eh. Ako, nung bago ko sa New Zealand talaga, I tried to speak English. Um, kahit mali-mali pa ulit-ulit. And very, I'm, I'm just so happy na very understanding din yung mga work ko doon. Then, until na, natuto talaga ako, I, adapt, I adapted to uh, to their way of speaking. And, you know, um, yung accent nila I try to mimic yung accent nila kasi uh, ganun dapat eh dapat mag-adapt ka to different kind of situations for you to try so my suggestion for um nurses or who's planning to move here challenges the language but you know to yourself that you know how you know you know the language because it's English we're taught to speak English so um try to speak English even mali mali And another, another, ano din, another challenge then is driving. For me, kahit nagjo-drive na ako sa New Zealand, nahirapan pa rin ako. Kasi we drive opposite. We drive, we drive, we stay on the left. So, hindi ako marunong mag-drive sa Pilipinas. Um, then, natuto na lang ako dito na nag, parang sa Pilipinas. So, kung hindi kayo nagjo-drive sa Pilipinas, my suggestion is, For you to be independent sa America, you have to learn how to drive. Kung, kung katulad ko kayo na walang maaasahang mag-drive sa sarili nila, <laughs> pero kung kayo meron namang asawa na ano, di ba? Ma, 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 ano mag-drive for you, then, then better, pero mas maganda pa rin yung, yung you know how to drive. So, yun yung challenge. And 
sa nursing kasi nursing sa work I believe na Filipinos are very resilient. We are very um, adaptable to, you know, mm-hmm. different kind of situation. And para tayong, ano eh, para tayong jelly ace, alam mo, naguhulma tayo sa kung, <laughs> kung anong lalagyan, kung, sa, kung nasa anong lalagyan tayo. So, yeah, so, I think madali na lang yun. And we are ang mga Pinoy madaling magtiwala eh. So, um, syempre, pipiliin natin yung pagkakatiwalaan natin kasi this is a different place kasi America target, hello, target to ng lahat. Media ng manluloko, lahat, di ba? Kasi America is uh, parang target ng lahat. So, Um, Vino, what's it like living in Roseville, California? And aside from traveling, ano pang ginagawa mo during your day offs? Oh, during my day off? Um, alam mo, I like wine eh. I like drinking oh. wine. Kaya yun na yung po Vino, eh, no? <laughs> wine. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so kanina, yeah, um, galing ako sa uh, yard house, then kumain ako ng steak and wine, nag-chill, chill. Kasi, you deserve it. Pinagirapan mo yun. So, parang, enjoy mo yung, ka- kumain ka, eat what you wanted to eat, di ba? Um, ano yung question? <laughs> What's it like living in like, oh. Roseville, California? And, Vino, how about yung discrimination? Malakas ba yung discrimination dyan? Sorry. Alam mo, dis- discrimination, alam mo, I, I believe discrimination is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, But so far, I did not, uh, I did not experience that. Pero I believe kahit na sa Anka, na sa New Zealand, ka na sa UK ka, if meron talagang sera ulo na alam mo yon na gusto na iba yung mentality, iba yung mentality. Then even even, eto ah, to be honest, even Filipino can discriminate its own. So, um, yeah, so sa akin, so far sa California, hindi ko pa na-experience ma-discriminate. Hindi ko pa na-experience. Pero I heard some stories. And um, yung, alam mo yung recent, recently na sabi is Asian hate? Oh. Na parang, yeah, ewan ko kung nabalitaan yun na. Pero sabi na sa California, pero I was in California, I don't feel it. I mean, I did not experience mm-hmm. it. So I, I'm thinking, it's it's me. So whatever I say, um, labas na po yung vlog dito. So, <laughs> yung vlog ni Daniel. Pero I think it's because America is center of media. Uh-huh. They, they wanted to exaggerate it. They wanted to like, it's always America. Like, they'll say um oh may incident na ganyan papalaki na nila papalaki na nila para kasi ano eh catchy talaga pag America eh. I don't know I don't know why pero laging ganun pero yung kung discrimination hindi ko talaga na experience yun yung honest ko and anywhere you are in the world even you are in the Philippines you can be discriminated by your own so it's it's you how to handle mm-hmm. yung mga ganyang situation. And um, ang masasabi ko lang sa mga nurses na pupunta dito, na bago pa lang, always have an open mind. Uh-huh. Oh, it's, it's 2021. Why there's a need to discriminate someone, you know? Um, open mind. Non-judgmental environment. So, um, I believe your workplace ko kasi where I'm working right now is a non-judgmental free zone. Uh, how was that? Judgmental free zone. So, <laughs> mali yan. <laughs> judgmental free zone. So, so, yun. So, parang bawal ka talagang mag-discriminate. Bawal na bawal. And ganun din sa New Zealand. Bawal na bawal din mag-discriminate. But, meron pa rin na mga ilan-ilan. Na, oo. May gan- sa Australia, ganun din. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was in the Philippines. I was so young. Um, I remember I was like high school. And then 
sumakay ako sa bus. Tapos, may ibang lahi. I'm, I'm not gonna mention kung ano kasi hindi ko naman alam. Pero may ibang lahi yung sumakay sa bus. Alam mo sa Pinas, yung nagtutulakan. Yung nagtutulakan ba? Then, then, umakyat ako. Then, siya naman na, andun. Siguro natulak ako. Tapos natulak ko rin siya. Siniko niya ako. Siniko niya ako. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, don't push, don't push. Stupid crap. I'll never forget that. Sabi ko, sa isip ko lang, grabe ito ah. So, so, ganyan. So, why I'm saying that? Kasi, even in your own country, you can be discriminated. Mm-hmm. Diba? Pero it doesn't mean na yung nag-discriminate sa'yo, kasi I think yung tao na yun is from, uh, from a place na pumunta na ako or I've been. So, it doesn't mean na yung tao na yon ganun din yung yung mentality ng mga taong nandun sa lugar niya. Gets mo ko? So, kung kumain ako ng spaghetti, hindi ko nagustuhan yung lasa. Hindi na ba ako kain ng spaghetti? Kikain pa rin ako, di ba? Kasi hindi lahat ng spaghetti ganun yung lasa. Gets mo ko? So, Sorry ah. So, so, parang ganun yung mentality ko. So, kahit saan ka, pwede ka ma-discriminate. Yeah. Tama. Tama. <laughs> oh. Sa nagutom tuloy, nagutom ka no. <laughs> yeah. Um last question din Para dun sa mga nurses that are migrating there soon, um uh-huh. ano yung mga tips mo to be more prepared in clinicals and American life aside sa driving and sa language? Um parang na mention na mention ko isa-isa pero sig- uh, parang okay so we go back to uh, discrimination de ba so una yan, aside from language yan yung language pangalawa avoid stereotype uh-huh, uh-huh. so when we move here we avoid stereotype avoid natin yan na ah itong ganyan lahi nila ganyan uh-huh. alam mo yon yun yung sabi ko sa'yo eh. Iba-iba yung lasa ng spaghetti. So, daming, daming it doesn't yun. mean na... Yeah, so... And pangatlo, yun yung sabi ko kanina, have an open mind. It's 2021. Diba? Lalawakan yung pag-iisip. Diba? Um, and... Be brave. Alam mo yun? Kasi kaya ka nandito sa Amerika, there's a purpose. There's a purpose na nandito ko sa Amerika. Kasi, di ba nga, it's, it's land of the brave, uh, home of the brave, land of the free. So you're here kasi may purpose. All right, Vino, thank you so much for inspiring us with your story. I know a lot of nurses are practicing dialysis in our home country, and I hope that the tips that you shared with us in this episode will help them in preparing for the American journey. Guys, if you're watching this far, please type in a heart, a syringe, or a hospital icon para lang I know how many of you guys are watching till the end. Um, nurses, please take care and see you guys in the next video. Bye.